Boom. Bootleg Kev Podcast. Special guest. My good friend. Dog. Ritz. My dog. What's up, buddy? Well, first of all, as I've been telling you since I've been here, man, I'm so proud of you. This Thank is you. fucking crazy. Dude, I watch your interviews all day, like everybody you're doing. Like, uh, man, dude, I'm so proud of you, man. You're killing it. Kev actually let me rap, um, I think, the Chief Keef record. Mm, 2012? Yeah. yeah, and I don't know where we were. We're in Phoenix. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But, dude, you're killing it, bro. Mm, thank, thank you. Thank you for you. still being my friend. Of course. After all this fame and fortune. And I really appreciate it. And after, you know, just getting to know you as an actual human being and still deciding, you know, I'm still associate with this guy. <laughs> like, I, yeah, that's kind of up in the air. Like, right. It's like, hey, maybe not. Um, uh, thank you. Sweet jacket. And the same with me. Too. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, it's a hell of a jacket you got on. It's a do you want a jacket? It's like if you're gonna do a jacket. Oh, that's a. Do you, do you want, want a jacket? A jacket? jacket. You want a jacket? Ah, do you nah, want nah. a jacket? Jacket. This is a. Do you want a jacket? Jacket. Yeah. Now nah, you know what it is though. I swear to God, this shit works. I've been playing these crowds on these tours, man. When you get a shiny ass jacket, especially Michael Jackson, has such an impact. Even if you're fat, redheaded, and all that shit, you get a fly ass jacket. It's crazy. I'll come out on stage and they're like, and they want a jacket. Be? Well, they just look. And they they, they want a jacket. They probably do. Most they want to jack are, you off. Most of them are men. But <laughs> unfortunately, most of them are men that have B.O. and hatchet man tattoos. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but me and me and my DJ Chris Crisis, we have a um, we do have a thing, though. Like when I take my jacket off, he does a little. No, 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 no. No, I saw that today. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so Shout no. out to Chris Crisis. Hell of a, a tour DJ. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. But good with the figgity figgities. Oh, that's my dog, man. I love him. To death. Good with the wiki wiki. He can brother. scratch his ass off. Yeah, he's, he's my brother. Um, But yeah, as far as the jacket goes. Like, I um, heard he's got a big dick too. Anyway, continue. You said that's what you said. Chris Crisis. Chris I, Crisis. I've never seen his dick. Chris Crisis. Don't you brag about how big your dick is? It's no bragging. It's no. Bra <laughs> is it, are you? Are you just telling the truth? No, no. You got to cut. Yo, word on the street. Word Yo, on the street. We're okay. about to get Crisis so much play right now. Come on camera and talk about your dick real quick, Chris. No thanks. No. Yeah, he's oh, done. Wow. He's good. That's what happens to motherfuckers with big dick. They don't. They don't need all that. Yeah, kickstand Chris over there doesn't yeah, want to get on short. camera. Yeah, no thanks. I don't have to talk about it. You want to see it? See it in real mm. life, motherfucker. Yeah. Here's my dick. Yeah, I'm on tour. Sixty-seven more dates and with Tech Nine. By the way, we don't need to make this motherfucker's head any bigger of us. Any bigger than it literally is. <laughs> 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 Let me uh, ask you something. Yeah. Your dude, I can't believe I'm here. By the way, Kev, I, if, I've been I, watching you. I've been stuck in. The I've house, interviewed like, you a million times. I know, but like, man, you're you're like a huge celebrity now, man. I'm. I'm you want to know what's crazy? Do you remember the night, the worst night of my life? You were there when I ate edibles. Oh yeah, you flipped your shit, and you, Dog, uh, you flipped out. You pulled a Ritz. I interviewed you on the bus, and Miss Dimples was there. And we were hanging out, and yeah, I, yeah, I was like, bro, dimples, I was like, bro, I ate, sh I ate a, an edible. I don't, I don't even remember. Like, I, it didn't, hit, it, it didn't hit me. But you went on stage, and I lost my fucking mind, dude. You know what's crazy? I tell the story all the time because it's the worst night of my life. You know what's crazy about that is, is like, like me having anxiety or like, man, I used to be like, I, I've, you know, not to be like lame as hell. Everybody smokes weed, but I used to be like Snoop Dogg back in the day. I could smoke, you know, I'd get mad if somebody rolled down the window. But as I got older, shit made me paranoid. And I, I smoke now. Shit, I'm high right now. You right. know what I'm saying? But it's like, <laughs> you're fucking ass. I felt bad for you, bro. Because I had way too much bad. edibles and I was oh hallucinating. Bro, you were performing and I'm in the crowd Lifted's next to me. My best friend Gio's next to me. I couldn't move my legs. I felt like they were planted in the floor. And you were sitting next to you on stage was Garfield the cat <laughs> with, with, with slot machine eyes. I know when you came backstage and talked to me afterwards, I, I was felt, puking I outside. Felt sorry for bro, you. I was like, puking outside. Did me wrong, I was bro. throwing up. And then all the wild shit that could happen to someone while being. Uh, tripping balls happen yeah, yeah. like some native american dude came up to me in the fucking alley and was like telling me about his tribe and shit and oh, i thought he Jesus wasn't even there Christ. but he was really there so like, get the fuck away from and me then yellow, and then yellow and then yellow wolf's shit. fucking tour manager brooklyn beat the living shit out of some dude right in front of me while that? i'm tripping balls uh, did he this was at club Shout red brooklyn. Yeah. this was club red in tempe arizona dude can i tell a story about brooklyn real quick that's a funny one um not the one just don't tell the story you told earlier <laughs> no, no, no 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 not that but like like you know so i don't ever get i was telling you earlier like people don't ever ask me questions like that i really like to share that i think yeah. my fans would like to hear right 
So Brooklyn, and I don't want to knock this guy in the city because I'm a cool motherfucker, man. I, I respect the local rapper, right? So we're at this local show in Florida, right? There's this crew of rappers, and they're doing their thing. And I'm trying to get in, be cool with the local guys because I respect them. You know what I'm saying? Especially they're deep and all that shit. Not even on no, no tough shit, just trying to be cool with them. So I'm shaking their hands with them, doing all that. So I do that, do the meet and greet. I come back about four or five hours later. And these guys, they did their set. They probably got all their homies out there feeling themselves. You know what I'm saying? Mm. They're, they're having a great time. Which if I could have opened up for a me or whoever yeah. back then. You would have. Either way, I would have been having the best night of my life. So this guy was feeling himself so much. My ass gets up on there. Hey, yo. And shout out to all the motherfucking openers in this bitch. Everybody's struggling trying to rap. This dude gets up on stage. Oh, it's me. Brooklyn comes out. Bam. Bam. Fucked him up. Dude. Kicked him he, so hard in the back. <laughs> yo, that motherfucker Brooklyn did not play. I felt so bad for the kid, man. He was the main guy. But yeah, sh I mean, dude, I'm not calling out no names. I don't even remember. And shout out to you for- What city uh, in Florida was this? I don't know. One of them crazy ass white boy with gold teeth city. Uh, you know, right all of them? Yeah, all of them. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm right away. I'm in, you know, in Atlanta, same shit. But uh, wow, man, I felt bad for the guy. Brooklyn came in and like hiatus his ass. Oh, yeah. That's what I was talking about earlier, too. I, I actually got in a fight one time, but I let I did some bitch ass shit and I let Brooklyn start it and I just jumped in and got some cheap ones. <laughs> I walked away with a limp. Afterwards, I was like, "Man, yeah, I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be doing that shit." Um, you know what's crazy about Florida is you. When I first moved to Florida, you and Jelly Roll did a concert yeah. at some random ass hotel. Saint Pete, probably down no, that no. I, I drove to Orlando. Oh, okay. You guys had a random ass show in Orlando, and this is the first time I ever met Jelly Roll. That's when we. That's when you heard the Chief Jinx when we was in the hotel. Yeah, when he, yeah, yeah, when he yeah. played me his white floor rider music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out my boy. Yo, if y'all don't know, there's a rapper named Chief Jinx, hottest shit in the streets. So, like, if you like LL Cool J and Flow Rider, but. He's but being a dick, but that Chief is my boy. And he. And I love Chief. By the way, I love Chief. One of my favorite people. I was a little disappointed he wasn't on tour with you. Yeah, yeah. I, I was too. But that but being no, said, no, that if you like Flow Rider Low and Pitbull, but you, you're looking for the white version of that, Chief Jinx. Me and you were walking through the fucking streets, though. Chris Christ is favorite guy. Go ahead. No, but I remember that. Me and you were walking through the streets. And, and Ke by the way, Kev's a wild man. So anybody that watches his interviews and like. I said that to somebody Retired like Retired wild man Nah nah I mean Much respect to his family And everything else But like um, Kev's a fucking maniac So like Anytime people are like Yeah dude bootleg Kev Who interviews everybody No this dude's a fuck He's the rapper motherfucker We're just sitting here He's the party So anyway Anyway no but um, Yeah where was that, he at We, no, was in, we, we were in Orlando, Orlando yeah. And that night you, I, Is the first night I met Jelly And then I end up At, at Mike Busey's Sausage Castle. Oh, you were at my room. We talked about what and, to and, expect at the Sausage Castle. And you were castle. like, bro, I'm not going to go. You go, though. Trust me, you're going to want to go. Okay, can we do this real quick? Because yeah. this is a good moment to do this. To my wife, I did not go to the Sausage Castle. No, you stayed back. I sent him because I didn't want to partake. Yes. This is awesome. Thank you for giving me this validation. No, yeah, you stayed at the room. because yeah, I didn't want to do that. But I warned you what you was about to deal with. It was like... You were like, bro, you should go. It'll be fun. And I and I would like to go as an outsider, but I didn't want to get in trouble, man. My Mike Busey, man, shout out to him. Man, that motherfucker is a maniac. So we end up... Yeah, what happened? So listen, this is the first... So so Mike Busey is Gary Busey's nephew, cousin, yeah, it's whatever, yeah, right? Yeah, and he's a By the way, man. Mike Busey to this day is my boy. Like, we talk a lot. So Great guy. That's my guy. Funny One guy. of the most giving... Open-hearted, humble. humble dudes ever. So he has... Humble even though he doesn't look humble. At the time, I meet this dude at the show, and I'm like, who's this goofy-ass white dude with the crazy hair and the tattooed with belly the with random bitches? With spandex with yeah. his balls showing. Yeah. And yeah. you're like, bro, listen, he's got this house. You got to go. <laughs> so I just moved to Florida, and I'm like, fuck it. Let's get into some Florida shit. So I go over to Mike, <laughs> I go over to Mike Busey's house. It's literally on the swamp in the middle of fucking Florida. Outside of Orlando. I'm slick jealous too because I was sitting Bro, there like, why didn't I This go? house is like the House of a Thousand Corpses meets Juggalos meets the Playboy Mansion. Yeah, yeah. So there's a fish tank with dildos in it. This there, is like five years ago. This six, is seven, this is the old house. So because he's got a new house now. Yeah, okay, yeah this okay. is 2014. Yeah, it's a long time ago. Okay. Yeah, he had a drill though, right? Yeah, he had a fucking drill with a with dildo a at the end. Yeah. 
This motherfucker had a stripper pole. He had glory holes throughout the house. Oh, my God. He had pocket pussies installed in the wall. Here's how lame I am. I couldn't wait to talk to him about his experience outdoors. He's got a giant, bro. He's got all these machine guns. He's got pigs, alligators, pugs. Maybe it. Fucking all kinds of shit. And Mm. the first time I meet Mike Busey, he... Is like the most like loving dude ever, oh, right? He's a, he's a great guy, and I, I don't know him that well, but I know him enough to like I got love for he, him. He's bro, he so he starts showing me these sex tapes he has because oh his whole God. house is like filmed at all times. So he's like, "Yo, check out this sex tape of me and random white rapper with a bunch of tattoos A and random white rapper with a bunch of tattoos B, three way in this whore." Hey, you know what? I want to tell you this. I'm not gonna say who they were. No, go ahead, go ahead, go no, ahead. go ahead. No, because you might have been expanding on that. No, go, no, no, I'm done. I will say this, though. I I don't like, I was telling Crisis this, when a guy's like, hey, I was having a sex tape, and the, and it's just their little, they're, it's just their wiener going, it's like a point of view, was that POV? POV. I don't want to see your dick going in and out, motherfucker. I want to see, like. You want to see the bitch. Yeah, plus, it's awkward. Like, oh, yeah, that's great, a uh, fucking Jose. Like, I even, like, Let's I see if wanna... I can get Mike Busey to answer a FaceTime. Word, 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 word. This crazy bastard. This guy's a fucking maniac. He is a maniac, straight up. This guy is like. But was it point of view or no? He was showing. No, you. it was surveillance footage. Oh, he had it. So yeah, you yeah, saw yeah, like, yeah. and they're like high fiving yeah, yeah. and like. I hate that weird shit where it's like, hey, here's me, and it's just like just a bunch of dick going in a, in and out of vagina and shit. Tons of dick. Yeah, no, he's not answering. It's in. He's in Florida. So what time is it? There? Oh, it's 3 late. It's late. It's late. We on bootleg Kev time right now, man. I'm it's late him. night. Man, bootleg goes all night, man. This motherfucker's on some dope. Yeah, he just texted me the other day. <laughs> He'll call. I just yeah, told him hey, what we're doing. He's yeah. going to be like, I'm going to wake up for this. His ringer was probably off. He'll probably call back. Dude, he does a fucking... Do you know every Veterans Day, he has some chick named Jenny Jizz at the Sausage Jenny Castle? Jenny Jizz? Jenny Jizz nice. at the Sausage Castle. Nice. And this motherfucker, Mike Busey, invites all veterans to his house. This fool will have like two or 300 veterans at his house, and this Jenny Jizz bitch sucks them all off. Wow. So if you're a veteran and you live in Central Florida and you yeah. want a blowjob on Veterans Day, all you got to do is pull up to the Sausage Jenny Castle Jizz and Jenny there. Jizz will serve you in a room. F- Bro, it's like a room full of like 200 dudes and this bitch is just she's in like the middle. Fluffer, just blah, 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 no, she's in the middle just serving everybody with fucking cum all over her fucking wow. face. So, you know what? God bless you, Jenny Jizz. I think for, that's her name. So, Jizz is in it. Yeah, either way, whatever your name is, a.k.a. Jane Jizz. Um, but yeah, that's dope. That's dope. I couldn't do it. It'd couldn't be one it. of those veterans and be in a room with like two hundred other dudes. Yeah, but it, but you know what? Imagine if you're like one ninety nine. You're like, damn, this bitch has a belly full of sperm right now. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm at the end of the line. I showed up late. Well, that might get you going. It's and like, she's hey, like, hey, no definitely, pressure. I'm she's like, definitely uh, she's like, definitely seen. She's definitely like fifty two. Oh, well, that's even better. And he was telling me, like, her husband's there in films at all. Like, he gets off the, on that shit. Most of the guys that are coming out, they're probably, like, insecure. And they just want to, like, jerk off in Jenny Jizz's mouth. So they're, like, scared and shit. And then, like, finally, they're, like, 159. It's like, fuck yeah, this is no threat. Dude, <laughs> Jenny Jizz, you know what I'm saying? They do that and go eat a hamburger fucking steak at the fucking shit bar they're at afterwards. Anyway. <laughs> no, so that night. But, sh- hey, real quick. My bad, Kev. Shout out to Mike Busey, though. Because Mike Busey. When you meet him in person, um, whatever you might think about him or his family relations or his wild characterisms or his dress code, like he he ser- he's serving the uh, community in a positive way. Yeah, Thank serving you, him with blowies. Thank you, Mike, man. I love you, bro. Yeah, no, Jelly Roll was there, and I was like, that was the first time I met Jelly. Shout out to Jelly Roll. He's fucking killing it. No, he's killing it. He's a man. It's great, it's great to see um, his progression. Yeah, yeah, and, and and I'll say this about Jelly Roll. Oh, look who's calling. Hold on. Oh, uh, it's Mike. Oh, my God, you fucking maniac. Oh, dog, we just been bigging you. We, wait, 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 wait. We're recording, we so listen. you up. I was just talking about Veterans Day blowjobs at your house. Yeah, who is Jenny Jizz? Is it, what's the girl's name is Jenny Jizz, right? Jenny Jizz, they're here. <laughs> just giving up. Blowjob back one one. <laughs> man at a time. How many guys at one time, Mike, have you had over there on Veterans Day that she sucked off? 
I mean, we've had hundreds come over here to celebrate the party. But have she sucked off at one party? I think the record's probably around like 30, 35, 40. They just came all at once like as, as a part of a crew. Well, what happens is when we do it, we kind of like do it by like, all right, who's had the most active years in service? If you're missing a leg or an arm that bumps you up to the line. So if someone's amputated, if they're amputee, they get up to the front. Oh, yeah. Purple heart. That'll get you far up until Fuck night. It's you. like a draft. It's like a blowjob draft. A blowjob like, draft. Dude, Mike, man, we've been bigging you up. You're the fucking man, dude. We've been... I'm over here. I'm like, yo, I'm I was, like, I was, I was, we were talking about the first time I met you was at a rich show, and that night he stayed back, and I went to your house. I was just telling him, that's why I don't. Because I would have ruined his life, and he would have been over here. That's fucking, what, exactly I what I was you. saying about you, bro. I was like, yo, Mike. Seems like this crazy guy. He's very eccentric. Seems. He's all that. But he, he, like, I can't fuck with you, Mike, because you're a maniac. You'll get me in trouble. So I was so excited to hear what went down at the spot. And this asshole was talking about fucking Jenny Chiz. Jenny Chiz. Yes. Hey, man. Dog, thank you for your contribution, Mike. I love you, bro. Yo, just just take a good look at this guy's face. Mike, say hi to the camera. Oh, there it is. There it is. Are, is he in there? Ooh, ooh. Oh, there he is. Just so you guys can see what this crazy bastard looks like. We've been, we've been talking about you for like 15 minutes. Yeah, Mike, man. We really... Nah, hey. Let me see him one more time. Nah, nah, man. We really respect you, though, bro. Nah, like, I'm giving like, you love, bro. You're, you're one of the you're, you're, old, biggest, hardest dudes I know, bro. And you're a fucking maniac, hey, man, but like besides that... It ain't, it ain't been a decade. Don't age me, bro. Yeah, it's been a while. 2014. Hey, do you remember when we went to that trailer park in, in St. Petersburg and lit shit on fire in, in front of the yeah, fucking I'm brandies? I'm going to take it somewhere nice, Mike, you and the girls. It takes me to the Hollywood trailer park. Wait, wait, wait. Mike, do you remember when I had you guys on the air and this piece of shit had chocolate poured all over his naked, hairy body and girls licked it off? Christ, Christ. <laughs> this motherfucker Eric LaRock had chocolate syrup poured all over his body live on the radio and had some girl with daddy issues lick it off his belly who did? him oh dope we just bringing people together we're just making memories dude Mike man you offer so much to the world man you get, you get it back I hope you get it back in tenfold man I love you <laughs> alright Mike you're a fucking maniac keep killing it keep cooking it up yes sir you know we're coming to the Sausage Castle soon, buddy. Hey, Mike, when I grow some balls, man, I'm going to come to the Sausage Castle, man. I just, just got to grow them, man. They're getting there. I, I, I'll be waiting for you, brother. I'll be waiting for you. I love All right, you, buddy. bro. <laughs> love y'all. Y'all be good. All right, man. Word up. Fucking Mike Busey, the legend. Mike Busey, ladies and gentlemen. Mike Busey. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you got a peg leg, if you got a purple heart on Veterans Day, go, go get that first in line blowy from Jenny Jizz. I mean, who would? I mean, that's kind of a that's a real contribution. It is. That's a real. Some contribution. people need a release. I mean, fuck, man. If I was in a like, you know, not to be fucked up, but like, if I was in a bad situation, I mean, he's really offering the service right there. You'd pull up. I mean, oh, I would pull up. <laughs> yeah. You're goddamn right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> yo, you know what's crazy is you you've been smoking weed, and I feel like when you and I first started kicking it. You really weren't like a big, like you say you used to smoke back in the day, but at the yeah. time I feel like you really weren't like really into smoking like that. Nah, because like weed, like, so with me, it's weird. It's like, um, it's cool. You asked that too. Weed is like one of those things, like back in the day, I, I, it was so weird. Cause like, I used to be such a big weed smoker and it really fucked with me not being that anymore. I didn't know who I was, you know what I'm saying? Without it. So then getting it back or whatever, you know, just smoking it. Tell you a funny ass story. It, no, so anyway, getting it back, it makes me a little paranoid. Yeah. Sometimes I'm having a good time. It depends who I'm with. But mm -hmm. I don't like that weed weird shit. Yeah. But that never used to be me, but it is what it is. It's honesty. Tell you some funny ass shit. I had a video shoot called like that. Ah, fuck, I don't want to butcher the name up. Shout out to the guys, man. Shout out to my boy Scotty ATL, man. Shout out to Scotty ATL. He just Dust. opened a grill oh shop here in God, LA. Dude, I'm so proud of him. Yeah, man. he's killing it. So anyway, anyway, it was a it was a like a Atlanta 420 mm -hmm. song, mm -hmm. and they had all these Atlanta artists on it. And dude, I was in Corey Moe's house. Shout out Corey Moe. Shout Mo. out Corey Moe. Dude, I'm in his house, and they're like, you know, there's 15, 
20 blunts around. And like, hey, all you got to do is make this eight ball in the corner pocket in the shot. I was so stoned and weird. I could you couldn't not, hit it. Nah, man. So finally, I couldn't hit this motherfucker in the pocket because I was so like, well, plus I've been doing all kinds of drugs and all kinds of shit. And all my homeboys were like, hey, man, we about to bounce. It was like, you going to leave me here? I'm, yeah. It's like 50,000 people here. I'm fucking stoned as shit. Anyway, couldn't make the fucking ball in the thing. Finally, I was about to leave. Corey goes, yo, Ritz, come here. Uh, Greg Street wouldn't talk to you on the phone. So I'm like, oh, no. Oh, you know what I'm saying? All stone and shit. Yeah. And then, yo, check this out. This type of shit happens to me. So I get in the car. I'm like, oh, no. I'm stoned. Thank God I'm out of the house. And a fucking cop follow me from 285 to 85. Yeah, that's the type of shit that happens to me, man. Mm. It is what it is. Yeah. Look at you looking at me like, well, I've never been stoned like that. Before. Oh, no, I have. Were you with me that day? I freaked out at the party with Drake Sinatra. Oh, it's so, oh yeah, actually there. you did. We just talked about the edibles. Yeah. No, that was different. No, nah, yeah, no. I've, 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 but you know what? I, the only time I've ever been freaked out was smoking. Because that was an edible thing. But smoking, I smoked. I think I, I smoked sativa. And it, I was fucking bugging, bro. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't like I was like bugging. Like It's just you, you lose your personality. And it's like you're just like trying to. But I never used to be like that. So it was weird. Like getting. Having What's it like um, co-headlining? After leaving Strange Music with Tech. Uh, it's really cool, man, because, like, um, you know, just Strange's family, you know? Right. Um, no matter what we've been through. You know, the Strange fan base is very fucking loyal. It's like, Ritz, man, we miss you. Like, uh, you know? Like, I didn't like, go nowhere. Yeah. Like, like I've dropped yeah, fucking I haven't gone nowhere. four projects since I left. Yeah, we're still friends. Like, everything's cool. I'm just trying to make some money for myself and just, like, further myself in business. It's mm. like... You know, you you know, you rent a home to somebody. You are your homeowner. You try to rent like six more, and you start doing your real estate shit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you business. dropped you dropped four projects since you left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put a crown on it, Chris. Uh, Richmond, picture, uh, picture perfect, picture perfect, and yeah. uh, SOS. And I got a lot more coming, so it's like, um, you know, yeah. Either way, it's one of those things. You dropped like, four projects on Strange Music. Oh, on Strange Music. No, I mean, for sure. I mean, I'm saying like that says a lot. Like you dropped yeah, two thousand ton of music, twenty eighteen. Yeah, I'm saying you dropped. You dropped the same amount of shit, really, project wise, for, from the entire time you were on Strange. For sure, for sure. Since and, you've left, and those got yeah, since I left, yeah, yeah, for sure. And like, but it was a different game then, you know, different time, different, uh, different way things are delivered to the consumer and stuff. Um, but man, the thing is that people don't realize, man, you get so caught up in the who's who and who's with what label and who's cool with who, all this music bullshit. At the end of the day, it's business, and I'm I'm friends with. Tech and Travis and everybody on that label, so I got love for them. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's not like they look at us, man. You left Strange, or blah blah. blah. It's like, yo, man, this is business, man. Like, we're like these are my friends, you right? Know what I'm um, what is like for you? You know, what for people who don't know, like the success you ha you've had on Billboard, yeah, moving units. Like, what was like the peak for you as far as like amount of units sold first week? Which album was it? And like how many how many did you sell? Because I, I know, know you were in the twenties and you yeah, were Yeah, yeah, it was probably my second album next to nothing. Um What did that do? Like was it like twenty four thousand or something? It was shit? fucked up, I don't even remember. I just remember it being so important to see that billboard like number three R and B or number one independent or no, yeah, hip hop or whatever. I just don't think people like recognize the amount of like what happened actual numbers you've done. Yeah, yeah. I did I did some numbers, they weren't like no, so they I were impressive. They weren't devastating. But no, but they, they were, were very impressive. They were cool, yeah. And and unfortunately, man, for me, not unfortunately, actually, it's just just part of my story. Is like, um, I came in the game right when people stopped buying albums. So I was but like, they bought well, your album. I was right on the tail end. But I had a friend though. Hey, I'll tell you what, we was talking about my boy Chief. This motherfucker is shot to. Him. <laughs> he was like, hey, we went into Best Buy and shit, and uh, because they were on like display, it was right. like the last time best buy was gonna have some shit on display and i was like dude this shit sold like twenty thousand. he was like but you gotta think though like one person probably bought more than one copy so <laughs> what a dick yeah i was like what the fuck yeah no nah, nah, i fuck with him still about it to, still about it to this day um i feel man, like i feel like chief jinx drives a challenger or a charger he does. He does. He does. He does. He definitely does. I do too. I do too. But not like Chief Janks. But shout out to my boy. But, got, but back red. on the album shit though. How like, I know. Rims on it too, right? 
I don't want to get lost. <laughs> All right, yeah, back on the album shit, sorry. Back on the album shit, because my I feel like my fan base really care about, like, music. And, yeah. Like, there are a lot of, like, aspiring artists. So, um, yeah, it was weird. Like, I got on, like, right when it was, t- like, when you think uh, when albums are moving and what's happening on the Billboard charts and where you rank at and all this shit. But streams changed everything up and, you know, things things happen. Um, but I was very fortunate, you know what I'm saying? But uh, it's weird, though, trying to judge yourself now because your mindset's still there, but that's not how to be judged. You know, well, what I was going to say, because like, I feel like you've done a good job because I know there was a point in time when you left Strange where you were like, man, I got to figure out this whole streaming shit now. Yeah. And I feel like the answer to that is what you're doing. Well, the streaming shit was like this. There's a fucking, your car's here and there's a fucking train coming. You see that fucking train coming for a long time. And you... Jesus. Hey, here you go. Hold on. This is great. Keep this, motherfucker. Uh, I hate your guts. No, I'm just kidding. So anyway, um, it's my wife. Um, but no, nah, so, so anyway, so the streaming thing was like a train coming. And then you're parked over here, but you don't see the same train coming in. Zoom, and then you try to catch up, you know what I'm saying? Well, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? Trying to figure it out. Right. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm happy with where I'm at, though. You know, it's, it's, the, it's the fans and the, the people on the outside that, that, that don't really know how it works. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, I can't complain, man. I feel like the fact you've just been putting out so much catalog is like the the answer to that you just keep feeding yeah. it you got to yeah. drop more often now yeah for sure and I, and that's what I'm. and now doing. you got the freedom to do that because you're fully independent yeah dude so i just i just dropped sos which is like eight records everybody's like yo eight records it's not an album bro it's ep bro and i looked up thriller it's nine records so i'm like thriller ain't an album no i think technically uh album is more than five yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Either way, it's a fu- you call whatever the fuck you want. That's what I'm saying. So either way, I look at it now, and you get these music guys. No, actually, bro, you know, an EP is actually seven records and an LP. So it's like, hey, fuck you. No, it's whatever the fuck I want to call it, motherfucker. So you know, and then um, uh, but I wanted to put all hard records on here. You know, Cinder, my manager, man, shout out Freddie Berman. Um, you know, just hearing my, hearing my music, it was like, hey, you can do whatever the fuck we want right now. You, know what I mean? you could did a you did a Christmas album. Yeah, well that hey, by the way, my Christmas album to this day is my favorite body of work I ever made. But you know, so we we just realized, hey, put eight hard ass records out there, see what they think. We got a ton of records backed up coming soon. How'd the so, Christmas album do? Not good. And well, I I won't say not good, meaning oh man, it bombed because same thing. There's no we don't have any expectations. We're just putting it out trying to please the fans that really love my music. You know what I'm saying? So the the weight of numbers and all that bullshit, it doesn't really matter as much anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it just is what it is. Um, but yeah, so the Christmas album, yeah, it was what it was. And I forgot what the fuck we was talking about. For What was he talking about? You were talking about um, SOS and just, be, just putting eight records together that were hard as fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we put the Christmas album out, and then, um, you know, so it was time to put some uh, new records out. So uh, Let me text this cocksucker upstairs to turn that shit down. Sorry. Dude, no, it's better because I'm fucking up because I have no idea what we're talking about. Are no, we good. talking about spaceships? Chris, um, what were we talking about? Two uh, packages, hard shit, smooth shit, coming out in January. What the hell were you talking about? I don't remember. You said hard SOS. SOS is hard as fuck. Then you got a good new group of songs. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So now it's like, so now it's like I could do whatever I want. You know, I could put out a Christmas album, and that's why I like the Christmas album the most because it's the most fun. It's the first time I sat down. I really had fun. Yeah, and felt like I was a kid again in the studio, and I I had a blast. All the songs go together. So if you could look at it like a movie. But, oh, that's what we were talking about. We were talking about how it fucked up. Let me tell you how this delivery fucked up. So a Christmas album, you really only have a certain window, right? Mm -hmm. So the guy who shot videos for me caught COVID on the way back. So the first week when the videos were coming out, he couldn't get them out. So the videos are three weeks late, you know what I'm saying, or two weeks late. So, I mean, you only got two more weeks before Christmas is over. So, you know, that shit was weird. That shit fucked me up, the timing. Did you think about just holding off until next Christmas to drop it? No, fuck no. My personal life is going through a fucking downfall funnel goddamn cake at the same time. So it was like it was just a big whirlwind of fuckness. But um, yeah, if if uh but yeah, we're gonna keep I I personally think like for me, the Christmas album is the best body of work I've ever made my whole life. 
And I've been rapping since 1992. Ritzmas. Ritzmas. And, and, and Christmas. And of course, Christmas ain't for everybody. Nobody get, you know what I'm saying? But it's it's a good album. So. What do you say your personal life is in a funnel cake of bullshit? Uh, how are you doing now? Well, it's been crazy, man. Like, um, um, you know, I was doing the Saturday sobriety session, doing all the shit for sobriety. I went to S Known. I went to rehab, got sober. I did the song um, uh, Twin Lakes, uh, Ready for Recovery. It's a great record. Yeah, thank you, man. Thank you. And, and you know, even people that, like, don't understand that record, there's just, there's so many people that do that make it so worth it. You know what I mean? I, I get it to this day. Um and I did a great job, man, you know. It's, it's that same, though, but it's that alcoholic addict shit. You know, you start thinking you're cocky enough to, like, really, nah, I got this. You know, and you fuck up, you know. So I relapsed. I was probably, like, a year and a half or a year, even more, almost close to two years sober. Relapsed, gotten some terrible shit to happen. And then, you know, I've just been in this situation. And with corona, you know, with the COVID shit and us, um, you know, quarantining and just being stuck, you know. It's been a motherfucker. But right now I'm feeling back on my feet. I'm, you know what I mean. So it's getting better. It's getting better. But a lot of fans don't understand, and the same thing. That's what I'm about. You know, I want to be real with the fans, and nobody ever asked me no real shit. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's what it is. You know, Picture Perfect came out. Um, you know that was cool. Celebrated the Christmas album came out, and life went to, went crazy. It was just like waiting to get back on tour again. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know what's crazy is like you always talk about like the you 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 touched on this in your music like the misconception that you're like a rich guy. Yeah, yeah. And like financially, you've had issues. Yeah, and I and you know what I get that all the time. Like it's uh, I'm happy you asked me that because I get that all the time. Like these guys, man, you broke ass motherfucker. It's like telling some guy like these glasses are ten dollars. And then they, they're like, oh, thank you so much. And they go order 10 pairs. And then they say, that's what you get for working them $10 ass glasses. So you can't use that against me, bro. You don't know my life. You know what I'm saying? Also, yeah, you, you, you're you very transparent. Yeah, very transparent. And, my, and I want to be transparent right now. I've had some money. Here's the thing, man. To everybody who's out there, who's working, who's an artist, who I've watched Bootleg Kev interview period and and y'all might not even know who the fuck I am or respect what the fuck I'm talking about either way let me tell you something a hundred thousand dollars is a hundred dollars two hundred thousand it all goes away next thing you know it'll be all gone and you'll be happy to get five hundred dollars you got to be careful man you know what I'm saying and it's not you blow and it's not like you're blowing it all on jewelry and no crazy right. shit it's life man you start thinking you're you're the big shit you got to be consistent and hell all of us know right now fucking a fucking pandemic can come and destroy. How much did that cost you? Oh my god, dude! I mean, I didn't work, bro. And like, because <coughs> you 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 do so much live live shows. Oh, dude, I I didn't work. So like, before that happened, I was already you know in debt from doing what I was doing, and and then I started a label. You know, when you when you start a label, you get an advance. You know, you do all that. But either way, man, yeah, it, it fucked me up. I mean, if you, if you got an artist that tours, right? If if everybody doesn't know me as a household name or on the radio or what or whatever, um, yeah, man, I, it's not like you're making a, a shitload of money. Most of your money comes from touring. Hey, what up, man? We got to interrupt the interview real quick to tell you about our family at Odd Socks. Now, when I be riding for Odd Socks so hard, man, it's because I really love the product. They got the most comfortable socks in the fucking world. I got a pair of Odd Socks Basics on right now. Go get those. They got the socks, WWE joints, you know what I'm saying? Shout to The Undertaker, Pepsi, motherfucking, really whatever you need. Some weed socks, Nickelodeon. But really, they got the draws now, ladies and gentlemen. I'm holding a, a pair of Tapatio underwear right now. You want some Pop-Tarts on your dick? Pop-Tart draws. And these motherfuckers are so comfortable. Like, man. So listen, you got to go to oddsocksofficial.com. And use the uh, promo code, the discount code BOOTLEGKEV at oddsocksofficial.com. You'll save 20% off underwear, the most comfortable socks in the world, crazy licenses. Not only they got the WWE, they got the Scarface, they got the Street Fighter, they got the Nickelodeon, they got it all. So make sure you hit that website, oddsocksofficial.com. Save 20% off with the promo code BOOTLEGKEV. All right? Go do that. Shout out to Odd Socks. Let's get back to the interview. What was... um? Financially, what was the best year you've had off of music? 
uh, probably around so around 2015 and just strictly from touring and not touring you know a lot of people hit me up and this is no diss to strange everybody's like man if you were strange you could be done. nah man when i go on my own tours I, you know i make a lot of money you know you set up tours you're selling merchandise you're doing all this you're getting a lot of money the problem is even a person like i like to consider myself somewhat humble which might not be humble to even say mm -hmm. um but um you know i've i've I never considered myself a baller or did how much how, how much was the most you made in a year if you don't mind sharing like off music I don't know off music I know that I had like touring music I know that. I had like you know almost a half a mil in my bank account wow you know so it's like when you have that and you um man a half it goes so fast and you went through that shit I went through it helping people I went through it doing a lot for myself it wasn't like I went through it like buying cars and houses I went through it over time and uh, and when I say half a mil, it wasn't up that high, but you know we're around that area. I mean that area, but I mean you know, you can fuck off your money, man. Try to be fucking save the world, dude. You can't. What were the things you learned, like uh, that you're gonna try to? Because like I feel like right now you're in a position to probably make more money than you ever have. Exactly. Exactly. What are the things that you learned that you're gonna like try to do differently now that you're? Well, one, don't um, don't uh, spend all your time, you know spend any of your financial investments that you've made well actually one i'll tell i'll say this because uh gucci said it the best and i'm like not like a gucci fucking enthusiast or nothing like that i'm not hating i'm just saying i heard this and i thought it was very intelligent if i didn't if i didn't the last five six years act like this was a fucking party you know what i'm saying and really approached it like this is business i would have a lot of money right now but instead, I was trying to do, like, trying to be, and I wasn't even buying nothing crazy. Buy some sunglasses, buy, like, eight pairs of J's. Give your homie, like, here's 20 grand. Here's 30 grand. Here's you was passing grand. out 20 grand to the homies? F fuck yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're, you're nice. Yeah. So, and but that's not, so I got to a point where I felt like I was, like, a, like, I hope they don't hear this and think that I'm, like, you know, it's my fault. I did it. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's how, man, you can't be, man. You got to take the shit serious. There's a window. You get your fucking money. You save it up. You know what I'm saying? Don't give it away to your friends, bro. Well, you don't do anything with it, man. Grow the fuck up. Stop partying. Like, yo, you're making some money. You have a big career. Like, dude, it's time. It's time to look in the mirror and go, oh, shit, that party shit is old. You know what I'm saying? It's hard. As an artist, though, we use them as an excuse. Like, I'm some creative fucking drug guy. Right. Drinking. Yeah, whatever. Um, but yeah, but to everybody out there, man, take that fucking money, man. Save it. Give it to your family. Give it to your mom and dad to hold. Give it to, I don't know, figure it out, dude. Because you only got so much time and you can make a lot of money doing this shit. What are your thoughts on this weird... Uh, and you know, it, it's it's funny because for people who, like, like, obviously for people who know, like, you and I have a long history... Mm -hmm. And that stems from my relationship with Yellow Wolf back in the day. Yeah, and like, to Wolf, man. Um, but what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on... Um, what are we doing? This way? Oh. This fucking white MAGA rap shit that's popping right now. It's weird. It's fucking terrible, in my opinion. It's weird, right? So, like... So, my homie Burden... Um, was a who's uh, absolute dog shit. Well, I I can't I can't join in with that because just, just I'm just I'm like, I can though. Yeah yeah I can't. He's I, an I, atrocious atrocious artist. Anyway, continue. No no no, that's that's fine. I I can't join in only because been the same thing. I, I you know I'm a friend man. They I was happy to see his numbers go up. You know what I'm saying? I saw his numbers. Because you had worked with that guy like back in the day before he was I on that. I had worked with him and I knew him as a, like not knew him as a person like we're boys, but like knew him as like back. I just, you know, if I meet somebody and I get along with him, I get along right. with him. You know? So I saw what he was doing and I was happy to see his numbers going up doing what he's doing. And I like, and I'm using him only as an example. He's he's the type of guy, Bird Man, stop that bullshit. He's the type of guy that'd be like, be happy on talking about him on here, like, oh shit, I'm about to get, you know. But now nah, this is real shit. Like, I like this kid, like, like not kid, like I like this guy, like he's a good guy, and I'm happy his numbers are growing. But the thing is, man, and this is not this M, yeah, it's just, I don't know, man. I'm so disappointed in the human race. 
with all this fucking shit, man. And I don't want to say Trump shit to get people mad at me. Like, oh, Ritz is a left liberal. It's like, no, just understandable. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, I understand. Like, if you were to sit here and be like, yo, I love the MAGA white boy rap. You're my friend, so I'm not going to hate you for Right, 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 right. You know what I'm saying? I just wish more people would develop that mindset of just being a little bit more understanding. But, yeah, as far as rap goes, what you're asking, and I know you're, a, see, this bootleg Kev, he's a dickhead. He'll ask you these questions to get the real out of you, and he's, he's, that's all he's sitting there waiting on. Yeah, but you don't quit being a pussy and answer the question. So, yes, I fucking hate the fucking way the state of the country's in with all this bullshit. And I hate that it's in hip hop. Yo, man, this is black music. This is black music, man. Period. This is what the fuck has been a lot of bullshit has been going down. And, and everybody on that other side is tripping. And it's been fucked up for a long time. Y'all are tripping to use rap music as a quote, as a, as a sales pitch for this fucking music. Y'all are fucking tripping yeah my thing is is that's like, what i'm saying I don't, I, real quick my bad care yeah. because a lot of people no, might continue. eat me up over that and i and i don't have like a i don't want to piss anybody off but this is hip-hop you know what i'm saying and you know what what that side stands for for the most part and not that everybody and i'm understandable doesn't and i'm open to independent thinkers I'm open to all that. I'm just saying, no, but don't. Let's not use rap music. I, can't, I don't care what you feel like in regular society. That's fine. But rap music. It's black rap. music. And when you're using your music to shit on Black Lives Matter and, the, and cool. the push and the push Boo Lives Matter and police. I'm like, bro, someone get these people the fuck up out of here. Like, man, this is rap music. That's yeah, it. I, I'm just a hip hop. I'll just leave it as simple as that. I'm hip hop, bro. And that shit ain't cool. But. To my friends. It's low-hanging fruit for these motherfuckers because they get such easy numbers because there's all these people who, who... At the same time, though, let's be honest. It's not their fucking fault. There's a whole society here that's allowed that's consuming them to consuming the music to have them... Yeah, I mean, yeah. obviously, it's working so, for some so of these let's people. So let's not... Like, like, let me not shit on them like they're terrible human beings. There's a whole They're society. just terrible rappers. There's a whole society, Kev, that... that I don't disagree. That Obviously, there's a, an entire part. There's They have fans. I know you don't disagree. I'm just saying, like, that's how weird it is now, right? You know, it's strange, bro. And it's you know, it's like, going to be even more strange. A year from now, Kev's got one of them on there, and he's on this show, right? And never. Where I'm sitting, he's like, dude, never. hey, man, for real, I feel you right now, dude, because, like... Never. <laughs> Bro, it's like, you know, Caskey's the homie of mine, and, like, he'd, be, Kasky, he'd be beefing with these fucking weirdos, and I'm like, bro... Who the fuck cares what Adam Calhoun has to say? This guy literally is dropping n bombs on records. Look, see, this like, is how Kev does. It's just goofy ass shit. Like he, he, he tries to start shit. Let me tell you something. I don't know Adam Calhoun. I I know Cass. I don't know him either. I just know that his know, music is dog shit. I know Burden, and Burden's a friend of mine. I, I like him a lot. I think he's a nice guy. Um, he makes bad music. I wish him the best though. I, 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 but and I like Kasky. I don't know Adam Calhoun. It's just such a weird. It's Let like it's like this weird clear. white rap, rapper like thing going on that's like developed the last few years. It's crazy. And you know what? You know what's fucked up though. I mean, do we look at it as a society thing, or do we look yeah, at it sure. as business? It's both. Yeah, but these. I mean, because they're taking advantage of, of of a portion of society that wants to hear that shit. No, I, I no, I get that. I'm not saying like if it's bad business. I'm just saying like. It's it's a weird time, man. Well, it sucks too because time, I dog. feel like people look at me like they, they might talk about this more than they talk about my skills. Right, right, right. Compare right. me and do and you know it's just it's unfortunate for somebody that really tries and loves making music. Right, that's right, the right. main part because I don't I don't look on fucking um, Google in the morning and see what's popular with the fucking president. No one gives a fuck, man. Let me tell y'all something, man. No one gives a fuck. I grew up on Martin, bro. Martin in living color. The race shit's been figured out. It like we all cool. We're all trying to work. When we taking so many steps backwards, this shit is whack as fuck. I don't know where I was going at, but I grew up in a different era, man. I ain't with this bullshit, man. Not I like sure. Yeah, I don't want to hear this bullshit, man. Just, I want to hear some hip hop. I want to hear some motherfucker spit. But either way. Um how did you speaking of motherfucker spitting? Yeah, you were talking about earlier uh, before we were filming how successful the record with Vinny Paz has been. Mm. Jedi Mind Tricks, obviously legendary independent 
Yeah. Movement like Vinny Paz. How man. did you guys end up linking up? It was crazy because like um I never met Vinny Paz and I, I met him at uh I finally met him at Soldier Field. We did a show in Soldier Field with like Crucial Conflict, Vinny Paz, like there was a uh, crooked eye, all these people. Like it was cool, man. It was so dope. And I didn't wear a Chicago jersey that night because I had like it was like when baseball jerseys was in style and shit right. like two years ago. I thought everybody would have one on, but no one did. I could have worn one on stage. But either way, <laughs> either way, I did this fucking show. And, uh, man, Vinny just showed so much love. And I'm going to be completely honest. Like, back in the day, like, I was not into backpack rap. Like, like mm. what we called it. Right, like, right, right. Back Georgia. in the day. Yeah, yeah. The boom yeah, back. Way the, back. I'm the, talking about 2001, 2000. Boom like back. Like, Def Jux and, you know. Man, I hear real. names like Jedi Mind Tricks. I didn't know. So, once I got on, on, like, 2010, Man, I study Vinny Paz. I went back and listened to who he was and how amazing he was. You know, so when I met him in person, he showed me a lot of respect and was just a great guy. And, uh, yeah, shout out to C. Lance. C. Lance made that happen. Um, C. Lance produces for a lot of people, man. Um, uh, Mercules and and plus OGs in the game. Um, but, yeah, so that Vinny Paz record was dope, man. He was It was cool. But I tell you what, though, the reason I say that about Jedi Mind Tricks is because it just goes to show how you can totally – disrespect something as a young kid who knows nothing and later on learn who the fuck you're talking about and how dope somebody is you know what i'm saying so like yeah vinnie paz blessed me man oh that's big man yeah um how's your current relationship with wolf i haven't talked to wolf man i think when's the last time you talked um i think i talked to him like uh I think the last time we talked was when I did uh, the box Chevy video shoot that never came out, like uh, 2019. Wow, so over two years, about yeah, two yeah, years. Yeah, but but um, so yeah, he never ended up putting that. My bad. He never ended up putting that video out. But um, uh, then I then I went to rehab, and then you know we might have DM COVID, and it just got COVID. Yeah, so it's just. I haven't talked to him, man. You know, I saw he did the project with Caskey. I've been listening to his music. I saw he put out all these records. He put out like four albums in a month. Yeah. What, what was his main album's name? Not to be a, like, what was his? Uh, Either way, his last album that he that he put it out. Dope. It was dope. That motherfucker was the shit, man. He always has these great, man. He's you a know, great I was writer. just a little, I, I was like, we've been waiting for a Ritz Wolf or a Ritz Big Crit album yeah, all this time. Yeah. And he puts an album out with Riff Raff. Yeah, yeah. And well, I'm like, hey, I will say this though. I will say this with that. And and, and riffraffs to the homie, you know. Good. Yeah, yeah, but can I say this? This would be good. This is perfect time. I'm getting a little, and this has nothing to do with Yellow Wolf and riffraff. Nothing. I'm talking about. Period. I'm a little tired of the collab shit. It's like fuck off, everybody. Everybody. It seems like everybody's like, yo collab project and it seems almost fake now so we could get bigger numbers right right, right like right. we were all well, me and you are fan of each other we should do a bootleg kev ritz shit i mean that would be real though because we're funny right, right. but you know all these motherfuckers meet each other it's like hey man oh collab 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 but i tell you a funny story one night i forgot that somebody asked me to do a collab and i was speaking to him like i was speaking to you know about my frustration with that and i forgot he asked about it i was like oh my bad man who was it Oh no, I'm not gonna say because it's my good friend, good friend. And I and I love to collab with him, but yo, fuck off with your collab projects, man. <laughs> fuck off, man. I'm gonna do some. I'm gonna do some because I gotta conform to you guys. Who would you do some? But I'm sick of everybody. Oh, we should collab. We should fuck off, man. Make some music, man. There it is. Who would? Uh, I mean, I know you had spoken before about like maybe doing like. Uh, Doing some shit like that, I think we're like, yo, Twister would be crazy. There's oh, like Twister would be crazy. Devin the dude, oh my god, oh man, the the main people. You know what's fucked up? I was thinking with interviews, there was like some R and B motherfuckers that like I would really love to go in with, but like I forgot, like you know what it was about. Yo, what happened in Ikea? I don't know. How real real quick before I get, I am a Doobie fan. Doobie's fire. I'm a Doobie fan. That's the homie. I'm a Doobie. He records fan. here a lot. I'm a Doobie fan of his music. Like, no, he's incredible. I like his music. I like it. I like Doobie. Shout out DJ Highlight. Shout out to the whole. Oh, shout out DJ the whole crew. Yeah, the whole crew. I just yeah. I'm a I, you know I'm talking about music. No, Doobie's an alien. Yeah, I'm for a Doobie sure. fan. Yeah, he's a, he's cool. Yeah, and he does that that new shit. But he does cool it like tone. great. He's a great. He's a great yeah, great man, writer. Great artist. Man, he's dope, bro. 
Shout out to the doobie man. Yeah, man, he's a shout. wild boy. He's the one who introduced me to the term tongue punch her fart box. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot. That's a lot. I've, yeah. yeah, I guess maybe I've done that too many times for that phrase to really affect me. <laughs> tongue, <laughs> I'll just fuck with you. Tongue, um, punch, put tongue punch in the fart box. But I will say this, man. Doobie's dope. Doobie's dope for sure. Yeah. Would would you do like would would you uh, if Doobie was like yo let's do an EP would you be down? Oh fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Like somebody like what I don't want to do is do an EP like where we have to like measure our dicks and see who raps faster. I don't want nothing to do with that. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And I don't want to force anything on anybody else that's like, you know, just because we're friends and we think it'll make some money. You know what I'm saying? We were talking about Jelly Roll earlier. Um Jelly Roll, hey yo. Let's talk about him, man, because Jelly's been it. on a run and I feel like he had played me a song in like 2014 called Sunday Morning. That yeah, Sunday w- yes. morning. But when, yeah. yeah, yeah. So what's crazy is he played me that record when I was living in Tampa and it wasn't out yet. Yeah, we were, that's that run we went on. And I was like, uh, bro, I know you rap and shit, but like, yeah. do that because that record is crazy. I'm happy to talk about Jelly Roll because, um, and that's exactly. Because we were in the same state, same situation. That's exactly when I remembered, like, um, you know, he's got something. He's starting to find what he's supposed to be. But then I was shopping at Kroger one day, and I heard this Sunday morning on the fucking thing. I didn't know it was somebody else's record. Oh, I, didn't, I don't know. It's a sample, yeah. Oh, okay, I didn't know. But he fucking murdered it so much, it made it sound like his But he own. sounds so good singing. I was like, bro, whatever nah, it is, you sound I'm like an angel. I'm saying that because, like, that was the beginning of... To, to me, where I saw him go now. So now he's not only, that was a sample of this Sunday morning, but he's making these classic, man. He's a great Save, writer, dude. Save Me is like one of the most, like one of my favorite songs in years. I mean, let's just say this. Jelly, it's gold. Jelly Roll, I love you. Um, Thank you for not calling your album hip hop this year because uh, you would have knocked me out the spot. <laughs> Yo, man, dude, I'm so proud of you. Yo, man, for real, like his album his writing he's a great writer no man. he's a beast and um, and he's crazy probably the coolest person i've met in music i'm so proud of best him, personality man. whenever they put that motherfucker in movies and tv shows and give him his own podcast it's over dude I, i'm so proud of him and his wife's like, got a dope podcast too shout out to his wife bunny all i just know is man he's a great dude and he's been at it for a long time and the fact that you're doing this now like Shit, that's crazy. Because he was like a Nashville white boy rapper. Like I, I, I used I mean, to like associate him with Haystack back in the day. I mean, it like, gives me hope, man. You know, yeah. that's what you want to be. Like that just means that you could be that. And after so many years, think that this is where it's gonna be. You're doing 500 cat. I mean, Wolf told me that man, you'll be doing 500 cat rooms for the rest of your life, motherfucker. So he told me, you know, what I'm saying, making man, make it the kind of music you make. But it just goes to show, man. Nah, there's time, bro. You just gotta tap in. Jelly Roll tapped in, and he's been fucking killing it. So I'm proud of him. You know what I mean? Uh, it's, it's a it's 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 a beautiful thing yeah, to see. Yeah, it's man. fucking crazy, man. It's it's dope. It's dope. Um, I I do get annoyed with people telling me I'm in that country rap lane because I no no, but you're not. But you I don't love do you don't do that at all. And yeah. Jelly, man, I've signed so many T-shirts with your face on it out here with his tour. It says he, it says he, you know, Jelly Roll was supposed to be on the tour. Oh, I know. I yeah, remember. But he, had, but he had another obligation, and then two year or year and a half went by because COVID. Nah, he originally was supposed to be on the tour. Yeah, I'm just straight signing Tech and Jelly Roll shirts on this tour, and people come up to me like, "Dude, I came here to see Jelly, but you, man, dude, I, you'll fucking do, I, bud. I mean, this will work out. <laughs> Hell yeah, yo. <laughs> what what is like? Um, you've done the Gathering of the Juggalos, right? Oh my God, yes. Shout out to the whoop whoop. What was that and like? my boy, Ouija Mac. What was that like? It's just fucking insane. First time I ever went there, right? I told the story before, so I'll tell some, like, other... De- so, first time we pulled in, there was this, like, big-ass girl, naked as fuck, just sitting on a dude's face, riding his face, like, just pussy all on his fucking mustache, like... How big? Eh, it's hard to measure girls, like, what, 250? Nice little fucking... Little fucking... What's her name? Goddamn Tammy. <laughs> <laughs> God damn Tammy was going So you pull on. into the, the gathering of the juggalos And there's a fat white woman riding the face And some dude's just sitting there yeah, it looked, it Like a kitten with a can of tuna and shit <laughs> <laughs> So yeah so yeah So we saw that And then there was like this drug bridge Or like where or, or no there was a raw dog tent Where you go in there and fuck the girl with no rubber 
and like, yeah, the raw dog tent. Wait, now this is before they changed their whole shit. Wait, wait, now, wait, wait. mind you, I've never been. This is yo shout out to all the juggalos out there, man. You guys show me so much love. I'm just not gonna front and act like I knew what the fuck was going on. Wait, 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 wait. The raw dog tent. Mm. So what is like? There's one girl who's just in there getting fucked raw the That's whole time. A myth. That's what I heard. I never obviously stepped into the raw dog tent. So it's just a bitch who's just yeah, like you've got to fuck her with no rubber, and you you know you go in there and just dog her out. Everybody's coming in there. You know, it's the raw dog tent. Go in there and raw dog, and there's a drug bridge. Yo, the shit was crazy back then. I remember seeing the Ghetto Boys perform there. And, you know, it's my favorite group of all time. Like, dude, I told you, I met Mike, Mike Dean, Dean tonight. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. So, like, Ghetto Boys, my, dude, I seen Ghetto Boys perform there, but these fucking juggalo-ass white boys. They I have just, no idea. They how. had some, but, yeah, not like, man, I, I, I hated it. I wanted to go up there. Man, it's a motherfucking Ghetto Boy. But they ain't give a fuck about me either, you know what I'm saying? So, I'm watching this shit. But, yeah, that shit is wild, dude. It's just crazy. A raw dog tent. And the drug bridge is like a bridge that I... Where you could just go like, you know, yeah. I, get I don't your, know. Get your heroin, get your meth. Right. And But so this is how... I'm sure everyone was on meth. Well, this is how tricky that shit is because I could talk about it and like a million of these motherfuckers diss me. So Juggalos, I love you. I don't know about raw dog tent or all that. I've heard and I've also seen and y'all motherfuckers are crazy. I will say this though. At my parents house my mom and dad's house they have on their cable they have the juggalo channel on there what's it roku there's a juggalo channel yes and they have the fucking gathering and i got to saw and i was like oh shit i know them yo you get to see like them like dancing and shit and twerking and shit yeah on the juggalo channel on fucking roku with all due respect you gotta watch this tonight nah i'm good man Dude, you, you might like it. I always say that ICP fans, with all due respect, are the ugliest motherfucking fans in all the hip hop. <laughs> See, this is why this motherfucker is going to get me in trouble. No, I'm not. I'm just saying, I've been to some ICP shows, and them juggalettes, they're just not the ones. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know what's crazy is, like, I heard all these, like, rumors and they shit. They look like my aunts. What's fucked up is when you. What's, you're stupid as hell. What's fucked up is when you go on stage, like, man, you don't know. They might, they're supposed to throw like bottle rockets at you. They hit you with shit if they don't like you. Blah, blah. Like, when you, even when they're happy, even when they like your song, they're like, ooh, it sounds like they're booing and shit. And like, it's, it's fucking, it's a crazy experience. And now there's like 45 year old teachers in high school yeah with hatchet man tattoos that they got when they were 18 i mean let's not get me wrong i mean the nudity is cool i mean there's a lot of oblong titties and a lot there's of a lot of long titties there's a lot, a lot of, of long, long pale titties, titties a lot of stretch marks with some fucking lime green on them shit you know congratulations you know like you go to a 420 world you go to a 420 show and it smells like weed i feel like if you went to the gathering of the juggalos it would smell like meth smoke <laughs> <laughs> no there's be it really clouds of meth being blown in the air. No, nah, no, nah, it really does it. It really does it. Smells like like Fago, like and like bo soda and shit. And feet. No, 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 no. I ain't gonna do them like that. No, nah, I nah. will. Now nah, I'm backstage. To be honest, I go on there and I just hope that I don't get hit with nothing. Straight up, I'm like just show them love and like yo. But I did tour with ICP. I toured with them uh, 2019, and uh, so that was. I mean, you know what's crazy is I'd love to interview those guys because I feel like. Uh, while I think that their fans are interesting to me, uh, aesthetically, yeah. not the most pleasing, uh, but I respect their, I feel like they're truly pioneers in oh, this rap sure. shit. Sure. And I mean that with all due respect. They literally showed everyone the way. And I, and, and like, and that's to say like everyone, like the merch game, the indie game, like they were the first motherfuckers to really dive in sure. and monetize their fan base in a way that no one else was doing oh man so like it was salute insane. to them icp are legends i never was into their shit like my cousin used to bump the great malinko all the time and yeah. my other cousin used to work for the cottonmouth king so i would always go to right, cottonmouth king's out, icp yeah, show but like you know they they Dirt ball. they mastered monetizing their fan base and so many people use their blueprint to this day yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, you know what? You know what's fucked up. I'm getting to the point in my career where it's like, 
even if it's something that, and this is, has nothing to do with ICP, but it's just like, even if it's something I'm not into, I respect it and try to figure out how it works. Yeah, me too, me works. too, for sure, for sure, for sure. You know, why it worked, who likes it, why it's going on. Some of this shit's weird. I can't figure it out. I be doing the same shit. If there's some shit I don't understand, I'll be like, let me at least understand it. Like, even let me music. tell you what I don't understand. Let's get this fucking out to wait. No, I'm just kidding. I don't understand this influencer shit. Like, who's the influencer? The the one on TikTok with Dan? Who who makes these? I don't understand it's that. It's not for us, man. But that's me. That's just how I feel. Yeah. I don't understand certain things, but I'll try to. I'll try to learn it. I'm but not, that shit ain't for us, bro. That shit's for the kids. And, you know, like. Well, maybe I you're mean, not jerking off to TikTok it enough at night. I'm not. <laughs> Clearly. I mean, maybe, you know, yeah, maybe you're not. What's the weirdest thing you've jerked off to this month or this year? Oh, man, dude. I don't know. Probably a picture of your cousin. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I couldn't find your aunt on Facebook, so I mean, her name's Wendy Scruggs. Jesus I, I, Christ! Yeah. Now I'm in trouble. And you know what? Fuck this shit. Keep that shit. Hey, yo! Shout you out know. to my guy Ritz. Uh, so, um, fucking asshole, SOS man. just came out. Um, now you said you kind of got like a whole n- over there. A whole nother project that's like, yeah, kind of more of like the t- like the traditional writ sound that's kind of ready to go. You know what's great, Kev? That you asked me that because the thing is this: these motherfuckers been asking me all kinds of questions online. Not these motherfuckers, but like people that are hating or whatever. Right? Like yo, it's like yo, the art of the interview is very rare, right? Right. You know, you're giving one right now and ask me cool questions like that, so people can actually hear it. But like, I, no one knows what the fuck my album's about because there's no one to ask about it. You know what I'm saying? I put out eight hard records. Um, SOS is about help, man. Seems like some therapy shit. Something you need to get off your chest. Man, it's just me going fucking hard, man. These motherfuckers, it, not these motherfuckers, but how I feel about the industry and the consumer and myself, society, all the bullshit. Man, the music is just coming out. And so I wanted to put something really hard out there. And also with the deep shit. And I got a ton of music coming, man. A, a bunch of shit. SOS is just where I'm at in my life, man. It's, it's help. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's showing where I'm at and, you know, going through a rough time with certain things. Uh, going back on that. You know what I mean? No, it's crazy. Do you want to bump a Coke? Because you no, look like I you're can't. yawning. It's been, I had to get my kids to school this morning. Oh, uh, well, For people who don't know, this bump. is being filmed at 1 a.m. Do you want a little bump in the morning for I've never, your kids? You know, I've, never, drive to I've school? never done cocaine, Ritz. <laughs> Yeah, right, man. This motherfucker did so much cocaine with me one day. That's not true. All right. think, really think about that. Hey, can I tell a story? Can I tell a story? Yeah, but I've never done cocaine with one. you. So there's a random guy. We're not going to mention his name. Okay. Dude, he's in the room with me, right? This motherfucker never done coke in his life. Okay. And I'm not proud of this shit. But I was like, so I scooped a bunch up on the key, and I was like, nah, man, you're good, you're good. He's standing right there in front of me. I go, tap. <laughs> fucking line just spread across <laughs> spread across his fucking mouth he fucking swallowed it got all geeked up he was all mad tried to fight me that night someone you interviewed so who interviewed no you? my friend oh your friend who does okay. not do coke he's totally against it i just was like no here dude just fucking with him Pop. that shit went directly on it's his funny tongue. because a few of my friends that i brought around <laughs> you uh have done cocaine with you just because they thought it was like doing, that's the move doing like weed with snoop yeah yeah it is basically it like i was like in austin texas with my guy baby joel and he did a bump with you in the back of the bus while wearing a macho man t-shirt and he was like <laughs> fuck it Ralph, it's been years <laughs> <laughs> yeah with ritz you know it's fucked and up. he always tells us, hey remember when we were in austin with ritz <laughs> and i did that cocaine in the bus Ralph? yeah man yo straight up though to answer that like that is damn near worth more than a million dollars, man. That's amazing. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. crazy. Because I could just be me, just somebody in my neighborhood doing a bump. Hey, how, how did it, uh, how, how did, was it dope to finally get the White Jesus records on the DSPs? With the, with the, uh, the, the, the you know, you kind of put them out with the two separate releases? I was in rehab. I was in rehab during that. So, yeah, that was shout out to Freddie Berman, my manager, man, who really, really did that, man. I was in rehab. Yeah, because yeah. I was like, yo, a lot of those records, like, you got to go on Dap Hiff to listen to. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. He put that out, man. You know, it was a, it was a thing, and uh, he really held, held me down while I was in there. And really, that really kept that really kept me going, man. I see people with them T-shirts on, man. Like, that shit was crazy because I was gone. I had nothing to Doing do. Doing the that. record that really didn't make it was the intro, right? Yeah, because the fucking funeral sample. Right. 
Yeah, the funeral march is fucking copywritten. Mm. Yeah. That was a fucking, that's a great yeah. record. So, of course, everybody's like, hey, man, fuck you for not putting white Jesus. No, I was kidding. They would get mad. It's on, shit. well, you know what's funny? That that video wasn't even on YouTube. I think it was on Venmo. Nah. Or not Venmo. What was the name like, of that? Yo, what? So, Wolf. Vimeo, Vimeo. Yeah, Vimeo, Vimeo. The video was on Vimeo. Yes. Not, I remember watching nah, it on Vimeo. You know what it was, was, and I, I don't want to disrespect the dude who shot it, man, um, but uh, I don't know what the fuck happened to him. I ain't talked to him, but um, Wolf, like, half, like, directed it. And, um, man, it ran for a while, and then that motherfucker took the video off the channel. Oh, wow. And just was gone. Yeah. And that's why I'm scared of samples, too. Like, dude, when I put out Angry Johnny, like, it was my first time with a sample. They gave me, they were like, yo, one more try, your YouTube is gone. Yeah. So we were, like, on probation for, like, three months. Plus, when I was, hey, yo, and this is another thing that's important to say on your outlet, whether it makes it or not. But, hey, man, the fucking YouTube thing is crazy. Motherfuckers don't realize Dog, from 2012 to 2019, I couldn't build a YouTube. Because of Strange. Contractually, yeah. And that's Contra- not a bad thing. Contractually, they had all your videos. Yeah, so that's not a bad thing. I understand. Like, yeah, I could have had a guy filming me day to day trying to add content, but I had money like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So now, you know, trying to build that YouTube up, people are like, people will look at you and be like, dude, your videos don't get the views like they used to. Yeah, motherfucker, because it's about subscribers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, you don't have the base that you all your videos were on strange. You have to build it. You have to build it, man. People don't be knowing the game. You know what I mean? Well, there it is, man. Um, so I'm assuming we're going to get another body of work soon. We are, dude. And you're about to get a body of work after this fucking interview's over. 